Hello there, my name is Littman. I'm a cartoonist from California, and I'm here today to share with you what I think is some very interesting possible circumstantial evidence that points to Richard Gajkowski being the infamous Zodiac Killer. Before we get started, I'm going to put a link in the description that will lead you to a list of all the pre-existing circumstantial evidence against Richard Gajkowski. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, look, I know that anybody who's researched the Zodiac Killer for longer than five minutes has heard of Richard Gajkowski, namely the fact that there are four letters in the Z408 cipher that look like they make up the first syllable of his name. And like many of you, when I first saw it, I thought it was really stupid and that it was the epitome of cherry-picking. I mean, there is an entire list of suspects who at first glance seem to be many, many times more likely to be the Zodiac Killer than Richard Gajkowski. Hell, Lawrence Kane was picked out of a photo lineup by several witnesses. And I will get to later why I believe that happened and why I think it actually points to Richard being the Zodiac Killer rather than Kane himself. Now, back to the Z408, the cipher which the Zodiac Killer said would contain his identity, but as we found several weeks after it was sent, did not. Or at least that's what we thought. Now, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, the Z408 was translated being read left to right just like a book, which is what we thought the Z340 would be. But as we found just last year, the Z340 is not solved being read left to right. You have to put blocks around several clusters of letters, and even read within those clusters diagonals. Now, despite the fact that the Z408 was solved years ago, I still thought maybe it would be fun to look at the Z408 using the same idea of blocks and diagonals, and I was shocked at what I found. It does not just say Geik. It says his full last name phonetically in the shape of a Z with an R in the middle. So you would have to have a ton of coincidences here. First, those letters appearing in sequence at all, on top of them appearing in that order, on top of them appearing in that shape, on top of the fact that this cipher does not even just contain the letters of the alphabet, but symbols that the Zodiac created himself, some of which are included in the name Gajkowski written here using backwards letters. The R in the middle is just the cherry on top, but even still there's more. I put a box around the perimeter of the Z and numbered the remaining symbols. There are seven of them, two of the same, and five individuals, just like in the name Richard, where you have two R's and five individual letters. Now, this might be a stretch. I mean, the whole thing might be a stretch. I'm not saying anything is definitive. This is simply theory. But this is a bit more of a stretch, even more so than the, the Gajkowski being there. I still think that it's interesting to look at, especially considering that the R is in the middle of the Z that makes up the word Gajkowski. Now, I know that this is not how Gajkowski's name is traditionally spelled, but the Zodiac loved to misspell words and write words phonetically. And this is a great way of throwing people off, because nobody, even people who might suspect Gajkowski, are not going to see that. I mean, even people who've suspected Gajkowski have not seemed to come up with this. And this actually adds up quite a bit, because the Z408 cipher translates to basically just a bunch of BS about the Zodiac talking about how much he likes to kill. Which, you have to think about something. Why would he put that in a cipher when he was perfectly okay writing the very same thing in print? This is actually quite congruent with a principle of coding that Richard Gajkowski once spoke about on tape. And just to add, right before I play this, Nancy Slover, the police dispatcher who the Zodiac called after killing Darlene Farron, has heard this audio that I'm about to play, and she believed that this man was the Zodiac just based on the voice. The whole thing about a code, you got to remember also, once the code, a telecode is broken, you have they never know, never any way of knowing whether it's a real code or whether it's just a fake code. So what's that mean? Well, it just means that sometimes, you know, like the military and all of that, sometimes you would send garbled messages that meant absolutely nothing. Uh -huh. So that you get the, the enemy to spend all their time trying to make, break the code. Now, why is that important? Because the point of the Z408 cipher was to give his identity, but to do it in a way where he could laugh at everybody. Because this, the identity was not in the translation. It was written in plain sight. Gajkowski, if he was the Zodiac, did a variation of what he was talking about in that tape. 
what he was doing was not writing a literally garbled message, but rather sending a cipher that did in fact translate to a grammatically correct sentence. However, it was a grammatically correct sentence that did not reveal any valuable information to the police or whoever was decoding it. It prom He promised to give his identity in the cipher, and he did, but it was not in the translation. It was in plain sight, in the shape of a Z. And this is completely on brand with everything the Zodiac did. To quote Morgan Freeman in the movie Seven, he said, if you want someone dead, you shoot and kill them. You don't take the time, risk the time it takes to do something like this. The Zodiac was always taking risks with stupid stuff. He would call the police after he killed somebody to report himself and let them hear his voice. He would send literal samples of his handwriting in the mail to the police. This man liked the thrill of thinking he might get caught, until one day he came too close to getting caught, and that's why I believe he stopped. But until that point, he clearly got a thrill out of the idea that he was making it just too easy for the police, yet he knew that they wouldn't be able to catch him. And that brings us to something else that I found in the cipher. In the cipher, around the word Geik and also next to it, it says, too easy, too easy, both surrounding the perimeter of his name, not in other parts of this 408 character cipher, right here, around his name, twice. That's a lot of coincidences, and they might be just coincidences. However, of all of the speculation that I've seen regarding other people's, other suspects' names appearing in the ciphers, this seems to be the most definitive. Usually, there's a big stretch that a person will make in trying to convince themselves that a suspect's name has appeared in the cipher. Like, uh, just for example, the first four letters that appear in the My Name Is cipher uh, are an anagram for the word Cain, which is the name of another suspect that I've mentioned earlier. And there's something to be said for it. Personally, I think that Lawrence Kane is probably the second best suspect after Richard Gajkowski. However, even this speculation does not account for several factors that are alongside Kane's name being in this cipher. Like, for example, the letters are out of order, they're not together, and there's several other characters that have not been accounted for. And I'm aware that with the Zodiac Killer, things can get extremely convoluted, and it's not out of the question that this is uh, a correct speculation, and that Lawrence Cade is indeed the killer. And as far as uh, cipher speculations go, I have seen just countless ridiculous theories. I've seen stuff that says, like, if you take this part of this cipher plus this part of this cipher divided by the circumference of a chocolate chip cookie, you get, like, Arthur Allen's grandma's neighbor's social security number. And I understand that somebody who's suspected Arthur Allen to be the killer for, like, the last 40 years, you, you would want him to be the killer. It'd be very painful to find out that all your work basically turned up negative. But you gotta look at the facts and not just what you want there to be. I don't have any emotional connection to Richard Gajkowski or anybody being the Zodiac Killer. It could be anyone. I'm just presenting to you what I found. And there's always more. And that's okay. I can be completely wrong. Somebody else could be completely right. I think that uh, people have formed almost teams uh, with Zodiac suspects, and there are many examples of people not only trying too hard to convince themselves that their suspect is the killer, but also that another suspect is not the killer simply because they don't like a person who suspects them and wants them to be wrong, which uh, I think is the case with Richard Gajkowski, as there are a couple controversial people in the Zodiac community who have gained negative reputation and who also suspect Richard Gajkowski as being the killer and almost out of spite and not wanting that person to be right. So Richard Gajkowski, I think, is often passed off as, oh, uh, no, he's just the one who the nuts believe is the Zodiac killer, which he may not be the Zodiac killer. 
but I do think that we should form a more definitive and evidence-based answer about Richard Gajkowski, and any suspect for that matter, before throwing their candidacy into the trash for whatever reason we personally may want to. And on that note, if anybody has any definitive uh, information that vindicates Richard Gajkowski, please feel free to share, because it only takes one piece of evidence vindicating somebody to topple even the largest mountain of circumstantial evidence that points to somebody being the Zodiac Killer. So, you know, if somebody watching this video uh, went to Disneyland or something with Richard Gajkowski the night Darlene Farron was murdered, say, then, yeah, please share, because that's all we really need to throw him out of the loop, not, not wanting him to be the killer based on uh, our relationship with somebody who suspects him. If you would like to hear more about why I believe this is the man we've been looking for, based on eyewitness descriptions, the sketches, and my own experience as a portrait artist, then you should join me in my next video.